Yo, what's going on everyone? This is probably gonna end up being my last video on Gilbert. Um, I don't want to do any videos for a while on this boss fight unless it's like a new character or a new strategy that comes out. That can help more newer players as I think most of the end game players kind of already figure out a way to defeat this boss. Um, this is more for like mid game now where it's like around like 150 and, and higher where it's like it's a little bit it can be a problem depending on what character options you have right so i'm going to try to explain some options for people now the most common lineup is the lineup you're looking at right now this is like easy mode baby mode if you're like struggling just, just go to this option and you should generally clear it and it may be a couple attempts you know even with a bad grid you can get it done as long as you have these characters but we're looking at here is the class I lineup you have our sage sage definitely the easiest class because you get double the spell the main hand options are plenty as you can run gam ultima um how long spear you've got many options for this class so you don't really have to worry too much about your main hand so it's actually pretty much the ideal lineup you can run as long as you have the characters right fun fun being the most important here for this lineup but if you have them, it's good. Now you also have Doctor as an option. Now the main hand for Doctor is a little bit more strict. You would need Zoe's gun, full limit break preferred, or Koro's um, gun if you don't have Zoe's gun full limit break. Koro's gun being the Zeno. So they're both totally viable to use. Uh, if you have Zoe's gun full limit break, I'll definitely run that though, because you do get the ability to drop Song as you'll get three debuffs from the Ogi from the core the, from the Zoe's gun, which is really nice. The EX skills, uh, the flex spot, you can put any EX skill. Nutrients probably the most common one, but you can put anything you want there. I, I'd really, it's really up to you what you want for your team. Rising Force is definitely also another option. It runs the Seraphic main hand, so you get more grid damage overall with it because all the weapons in your grid are pretty much core weapons anyway. So it's not a bad class to run. Um, I ha don't have any experience with this class, so I can't tell you on things about it. I just know the lineup. So the flex plot could be anything. I think Unleash the Fury is the most common one, but I also heard players run Mosh Pit. They do like an Ogi build with it. So I, it's really up to what you're looking to run with this. And the last class, the hard mode is Gunslinger. Yes, people have cleared it with the John Doe. This is a lot harder. I don't recommend this for many people. Um, if you, you have it laying around, you have it all done, maybe you can try it. But this is like for the hard mode people and you probably don't need this video if you can clear it with Gunslinger, to be honest. Now, the characters. Now, the characters, you have options here. Um, you're looking for a debuffer. The most common debuffer in this is Song because he allows you to hit multiple debuffs. Um, Ideally, you want to be able to hit seven debuffs throughout your team. So Song can do like seven by herself. Main character brings two with Miserable Mist. So just always keep that in mind. If you're running Zoe's gun, that's actually five from just your main character alone. So you get more options if you're running Zoe's gun. But if you're running like any other standard comp, you're only going to have two debuffs, which is from Miserable Mist. So you'll have to make it up for the rest of your party. Song is the most common one. You do also have John. John gives two. Claris gives two. So I think that's about it for. Oh, Sarina is another debuffer. I think I meant to put him in here. He gives Holy Sp Holy Spike, I believe, but also counts for a debuff. Oh, so I put Chairman Rose. You're probably wondering what Chairman Rose. Um, I was watching a uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield video. So yeah, that's why I had to copy and paste it. Um, that's about it for debuffers um you, you want to be able to hit seven debuffs at all time so this is your goal seven debuffs you can figure out what characters you want and go from there the spellers you want at least three the spells from your main team not including summons so that could either be fun funs ogi and two the spells from your main character that could be one the spell from your main character the spell from fun funs ogi and the spell from like vera Ideally, you want to run three dispels between your characters. It makes it a lot easier. You can get away with two, but I recommend having three on hand. So that's not including summons, by the way. 
did not including summons. I recommend three. Now, you don't have to run three, but I recommend three. I'll, I'll put two to three just so people can understand that. Um, that's about it for the spellers. You, as I mentioned, you have Vera as an option. I believe there's one more dispeller I didn't write, I didn't put down here. I can't remember the top of my head. Oh, Claris, that's the other dispeller. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, I think, I think Claris and Vera are the only ones besides Fun Fun. I could be wrong though, maybe there's an SR dispeller or something, but these are the ones you can run. And uh, for healers, you have, two, you wanna bring two healers. Generally, if you're running Doctor or Sage, your main character counts as one. And the other one could be Fun Fun, Sophia, Sarina, Zoe. It depends on what you're looking for. Um, three is technically better, but um, you could get away with two. The one, I'm doing a run right now without any um, any DW characters, and I'm running two. Some into these are ones I recommend. Thor, pretty good. Kieran, couple Kierans. <laughs> the more Kierans you have, the better. Obviously, it should be max limit break. The Kierans. Thor, not required. Star. If you're looking to like burst it down, Star is not bad. Metatron helps a lot. Zeph, Titan, Roll With Me Event Summon, Greya Event Summon. There's probably more. Uh, I've seen people clear with Baja and stuff, but these are like the best ones you can put in slot. Now onto the fight. Now we're gonna have to just actually talk about the fight. So at the beginning of the fight, he activates Soul Forge, so I believe it's right here. So you see it here, it drops all your health to 20k. Um, this actually benefits Magna players. No, I'm fault. This benefits Primal players more because they have, can run weapons like How Long Katana and Magna Opus for more damage options. So that's it's actually a little bit better for <laughs> Primal players that we get the HP drop. Magna players, I'm sorry, it hurts you a little bit more, but um, it's doable with Magna. It's definitely clearable. So don't worry too much about if you're Magna or Primal. That's not that important. It's more about the character lineup and how you rotate your skills. Now, another thing you gotta look at is that every six turns, he's gonna activate Bright Eyes. I believe it's right around here. Where is it? Did I skip it? Uh, yeah, I did skip it. Hold up. There it is. So on the sixth turn, he activates Bright Eyes. This is every six turns. So turn six right here, he'll activate it. And he gains two buffs upon activating it. There could be any of these buffs down here. Just keep in mind that you want to dispel these buffs immediately and as fast as possible. So you see me right here. I end up dispelling it with my main character dispels. Fun Fun also can dispel it, but you just want to be able to dispel them quick as possible. And we will look at turn 12 here. Here's another one. So turn 12 here, he'll activate it one more time. So every six turns, you'll get it. Um, that's about it. One recommend recommendation is that if you get mirror image, I think I get mirror image later in this video. Hold up, here you go. So I get mirror image here. What I like to do for mirror image is I like to call a summon if you can. I don't know if I call, oh, I did right there, cool. So I call a summon here for the mirror image. Because mirror image can be dispelled by summon calls, you actually end up dispelling two if you run something like Zeph. So you see here that I'll end up dispelling two of them. The mirror image gets dispelled and the uh, repel. It's not bad. If Gilbert has less than five debuffs, he will activate this massive damage nuke. I think I get hit by it early in the fight right here. So you can see that he has five debuffs right here. Um, attack, defense, attack down, dark attack down, and multi attack down, uh, double and triple. So at the end of the turn, he's going to hit me with a really massive nuke. Just to move, move right here. It does immense damage. This is without Zoe buff. And keep in mind, this is with double attack down. So you do not want to get hit by this. I recommend not being hit by this. The reason I was hit by this is because I pushed the 70 right here. So what happens here is I push 70 and I try to apply debuffs, but you notice that I don't have song skill two up here because I'm not refreshing. I had to recast song skill two. And this is why people you'll see people in videos refresh. They refresh because they don't want to cast song skill too too many times and you don't have it up for the 70. And because I didn't have it up for 70, because I was not refreshing, it ended up getting me taking that massive nuke. So you really, really need to refresh at the beginning of this fight, just so you can have songs skill up for the 70 and you're not taking that immense damage. I happen to have 
decent stuff. I had Zeus up and stuff, so I didn't die from it. But I highly, highly recommend you having high stats or Zoe's buff or something up. Or having the song skill 2 up and refreshing. I think that's about it for this. Um, now, when Gilbert has 2 buffs or more, he has to be a really massive nuke that does insane damage. I don't have any video of this right now. Um, I think I have one from my live stream of doing it, but... You don't want to get hit by this at all. You don't want him to have two buffs or more. Never. At any time in the fight, you do not want him to have two buffs or more. You always want him to have one buff at most. If no, if you can have it, have him have no buffs at all. So throughout the whole fight, you don't want him to have any buffs. So try to make that your priority. 70%, he does clear debuffs, as I mentioned here. Um, recommendations here is that you push 70 with your nukes. So you see how I saved song skill 3. I think I'll call it Zeus to push it, but um, you want to push it with nukes and then apply debuffs afterwards. Don't take the turn when you push it because you have to end up taking a lot of damage if you take the turn. Um, if you have Zoe's buff up, you can take the turn, but I recommend if you're not running Zoe to push it with your skills and then apply debuffs. I'm actually dying here. One second. <clears throat> Talking for so long can get kind of kind of hurt your voice. Now, he does activate battlefield here, I believe, around and he gains two buffs at 70. So you can see here. Here he had one buff on him right now, but I do dispel it with fun fun. And then after that he's gonna activate battlefield and gain two more buffs. I think I get my dispel back up right here, I believe. So he gains two buffs right there. He gained another one from the um, five debuffs, but it's okay. I, I do have the dispels for it. So I don't. Have to, I got lucky here. Actually, I got very lucky because I had mirror image up. So I was able to dispel two of them with one dispel. But I, I got really lucky there. I do not recommend dispelling mirror image with dispel. Try to dispel mirror image with something else. Keep in mind that song auto attacks does do AOE damage. So, Song auto attack will dispel mirror image instantly. I think that's about it. Oh, I had to got it again here. I think I dispel it with Zeus though. Um, because I didn't have Song skill two up to now. I think that's about it. At fifty, he does gain another. He gains. He does another nuke at fifty, and gains two buffs here. Just keep in mind that throughout this whole fight, as I mentioned, every six turns, he's still gaining two buffs. I believe we got to turn 18 here. So at turn 18, he's going to gain two more buffs again. I recommend trying to not push the 50 with on turn any six turn. Do not push 50 because you're going to end up getting like four buffs if you push it on turn 50. Well, if you turn, if you push it, if you push the 50 on tur any turn, that's a six turn you would gain four buffs, so I do not recommend doing that. Okay, it can be a little bit overwhelming in that situation. But you also have Kirin to help you out, so keep that in mind. That if you do get stuck, that's the point of Kirin, is to be able to get your spells back up. Now, other than that, this portion of the fight is pretty simple. It's not too hard. I will show you the 50 here. I think you have to make the battlefield at 50. So we can add that here. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure you have to make the battlefield. Oh, wait, I didn't copy that, huh? Yeah, let's do this. Mm, that's about it, really. Um, now, on th to 30. Now, 30 is a, is a hard part because you get hit with hyperdrive. Let's kind of skip here. Hyperdrive, hyperdrive, hyperdrive. Okay, so 30. Now, the way you, you fight 30 off the hyperdrive is by having lethal hit. Lethal hit can come from either Titan, Fun Fun Skill, th um, skill 4, Rising Force, 
um, three stacks of fever. So any of those can give you lethal hit and it allows you to tank the hit. Though at the end of the hit, he still activates a massive AOE nuke that will kill you. So the only way to survive that is by having either a barrier as well or having auto revive on the character that you that's going to die. Generally, it's going to be your main character, every character that full health. You see here that Hyperdrive does target the unit that has the most health on your team. Generally, it should be your main character if all characters are at full health. It depends on your team comp, though. Sometimes you may not have your main character at full health, but it really depends. I think I run through it right now. Here we go. So my main character ends up getting hit by this, and then after getting hit by it, he drops to one health. I actually have a barrier up on my main character so you can see him lift the nuke afterwards. It doesn't do that much damage if you have everything debuffed, but um, it does do quite a bit. It did about 1600 to me. Prefer I actually prefer letting your main character die here because you can get their auto revive with fun fun. I might just happen to have Zeus up at that moment, but I, I prefer having my main character die. Now you can apply Thor here it's not a bad option and extend it with song. I've seen many players do that. I have to do it in the video. So for people who are wondering what to do, you can use Thor here. You don't need to, but you need you do need to apply debuffs again because he does clear all debuffs. I don't have song skill two up. I was going to use song skill two, but I didn't have it up. Just know that if you don't have song skill two up, you're going to have a harder time. Thor is not a savior. Song skill 2 is actually better than Thor because of the ability of getting blind and charm. The, those are going to be your MVPs in this fight. And actually, I recommend that if you don't apply blind and charm on this part of the fight, actually recast your song skill 2 with Karen because blind and charm is more important than anything else at this portion in the fight. But it's that important to have blind and charm, in my opinion because it'll save you a ton of damage. So I have to recast everything just to try to hit Blinded Charm. I don't believe I do though. I think I missed it again. No, I hit it, cool, 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 yeah. So you really wanna keep an eye out for Blinded Charm in this portion of the fight as hit autos do pack quite a punch. Now they say 20% hyperdrive. So the way hyperdrive works here is not 20%, it's still every six turns. So we're gonna remove that here. And it's every six turns at this after this point. Um, so every sixth turn becomes hyperdrive. So if you run, um, even if it's like, So you can't, it, it's possible to get hit with hyperdrive back to back. I've had it happen to me. Even if you triggered 30% on the fifth turn, you can be hit with hyperdrive back to back. So I'll recommend taking the hyperdrive um, on the sixth turn. To give you more leeway, for the next hyperdrive, hold up. Okay. I think that's about it though. Um, there's a black album thing. If you don't have seven debuffs on him, he will apply some, uh, he will gain a buff right here. If you don't have seven debuffs on him, he's gonna gain a buff every turn. And when he hits level five, he's gonna activate black album, which pretty much wipes your party. So, I think that's about it for the fight, though. Um, hold up. I get hit with a buff here, I believe. Oh, yes. There's one more thing. If you are not above 50%, right? So, you see it right there. It, it just hit me right there.
Okay, so right there, you see that I get hit with a nuke because Fun Fun had one help at the end of at the end of turn. He activates a passive, which applies massive, massive damage to my team. So you you're gonna see that every time a unit on your team is below 50, and it also gives them two buffs as well. So you got it. You gotta watch out for that. So try to stay above 10k health at this port at this portion of the fight. Even if you must heal, heal. Healing is more important than going below 50. So just keep that in mind here. That you, ha even if you must heal and heal him as well, that's better than having any of your units drop below 50. So this, that's very very important for people to know. I believe that's it in the fight though. Um, there's not much more left here. At this point, it's just going to be him attacking and then activating hyperdrive every couple turns. So it's just about rotating and trying to burst them down before he kills you. You don't really have any other options though. Um, See right here, I, I have to get hit with it again. I almost got hit with it again actually. No, I, I did get hit with it, didn't I? Yes. Because I had lethal hit on Zoe. See, I'm taking quite a bit here. No, it took a Oh, here we go. So, one thing I don't recommend doing, using Zoe's skill one here. Um, because sometimes Zoe can take every auto here. And if that does happen, this can happen here where you end up taking a ton of damage. So, I do not recommend hitting Zoe's skill one. I was kind of on full auto. I wasn't really caring too much about it. But... I do not recommend hitting full auto. Not full auto. I don't recommend hitting Zoe skill one or skill two in this portion of the fight. So it's very, very important to avoid hitting those skills. You don't need to hit them anymore. And I'm pretty sure that covers everything. I think. I hope. I just want to skim through it just to make sure. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, by the way. Um... Yeah, I use Star here to get a little bit more multi-attack. Just so I can try to burst him down before he kills me. Because of Blinded Charm, it's not that bad of an option. I don't recommend it, though, all the time. But it is, it is an option if you're feeling like you're like almost there. The multi-attack definitely does help. You see right there. I think that, I think that covers everything. I'm pretty sure. Now, my thoughts on the fight, um, I like it. I kind of wish they do more fights like this. I expect it to be the next element is going to be dark, I'm, I'm assuming, I'm guessing. Um, I kind of enjoy these fights. I, I kind of like how they're not super straightforward. It's not like the hardest fight in the game or anything, but it, it's fun. It's something different, I think. I kind of like solo quests being a little bit more challenging because the... A lot of raids in the game are just mashing attack and refreshing and mashing attack and refreshing. So it is nice to have something where I have to think a little bit more. So personally, I like it. I know not everybody's going to like it, but I like it personally. So that's my thoughts on the fight. Hopefully that helps somebody. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.